Radio, our continuing series of Conifer Podcast. Conifer Podcast presents the true life stories of our U.S. 285 corridor and evergreen residents, their remarkable contributions to our community, and their encouragement to us all. We continue this week with Ms. Linda Shapley of Evergreen Newspapers and Colorado Community Media, publisher of the Canyon Courier, from a Conifer Podcast recording on November 2, 2021. Conifer Radio offers its gratitude to Linda and her team as founding supporters of Conifer Radio. Your community radio station would not have been possible without Linda and her team and the Canyon Courier overall, their support. Thank you. Hello, Evergreen, Conifer, Bailey, and our U.S. 285 Corridor communities, and welcome to another feature of Conifer Podcast. And we are here live in mobile studio with Ms. Linda Shapley, our publisher with Colorado Community Media and Evergreen Newspapers. Linda is the publisher of the Canyon Courier, our local mountain community newspaper, along with the 285 Hustler, and for the folks over on the Idaho Springs side, the, the Clear Creek Current. Linda is actually a founding supporter of Conifer Radio. So welcome to Conifer Podcast, Linda Shapley. Hi there. I'm happy to be here. Well, Linda, many of our listeners receive either the local Canyon Courier or the 285 Hustlers, but they may not be as familiar with Colorado Community Media as an organization. So to kick things off, why don't you introduce the Canyon Courier and the transition from Evergreen Newspapers to Colorado Community Media? So, you know, it's uh, thank you so much, Mark, for this opportunity to talk about it. Um, It's been an incredibly eventful year for the Evergreen Newspapers. So just a year ago, actually, uh, Colorado Community Media uh, acquired the Courier and other papers from the uh, company that owned them before, which was the Kentucky based Landmark Newspapers. The owner, uh, Jerry Healy at that time, he was very bullish about the future for local journalism, um, even as we were still emerging, you know, from the the worst of the pandemic. Um, And then in May of this year, uh, you know, Jerry was kind of looking to like, essentially, you know, retire and and move on. And the national, the nonprofit National Trust for Local News, uh, which uh, created the Colorado News Conservancy. And what they did was help secure the financing to purchase that the whole chain. So all 24 of our uh, weeklies and monthlies throughout the Denver Metro and Front Range area from uh, from Jerry. And in order to keep the entity from becoming uh, another cog in kind of the big hedge fund owned machine that owns the Denver Post and the Boulder Daily Camera. And so, um, you know, that deal is simply like the first of its kind in the nation. So the newspapers and websites can uh, continue on in their public service to the communities through that news conservancy. And uh, we have an operating partner in the Colorado Sun, which is obviously um, just a, a great operating partnership. They're well regarded. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that's really made a difference in the Colorado, you know, journalism ecosystem. So that's, uh, you know, that's kind of where what evergreen newspapers has kind of bought into what they're part of you know but what this means for the folks at the courier and it just means that there's more resources you know we've hired another reporter um olivia love who uh, and then uh one of our editors who just moved to colorado springs um uh glenn wallace uh we're replacing him we want to make sure that our editors stay local and so uh we've hired a kristen fiore who will be joining us in a couple of weeks uh, to be kind of the editor for that west side of the uh, and the mountain communities. And of course, you know, we have amazing staff that lives in the mountain communities, um, you know, Deb Hurley Bropes and Tom Fildy and Donna Reardon and Ruth Daniels, and they all live in Evergreen. They all, you know, are part of that community and they're all just working hard to make sure that, you know, your listeners and the folks in the community are getting the news that they want and the news that they need. So... That's kind of uh, that's kind of what we are and what we're all about. You know, it's really interesting and, and rewarding to hear that there is uh, additional resources coming to our side of uh, the world. And right. It's also been rewarding as the paper starts to look thicker and is thicker. We're um, we're seeing more news, mm-hmm. and so thank you for that on behalf of not only uh, 
the conifer side, but the entire corridor. Of course, you know, and I mean, we always try to make sure that we're, you know, uh, including uh, the news of conifer in that, you know, paper, even though it's based in Evergreen, certainly it's something that, you know, they recognize that we could, that we cover the region and that um, there's not a lot of news that's happening uh, elsewhere that you can't see. And so we're, you know, dedicated and committed to making sure that that stays, stays strong. Well, Linda, let's continue with your story. Tell us a little about you and what prompted you to take on the challenges of being our publisher with Colorado Community Media. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a I'm a journalism lifer. Um, I've uh, actually had no other job that that didn't involve the news. Um, I was editor of my college paper at Colorado State University. I uh, worked at the Kansas City Star and the Fort Worth Star Telegram, and my home pa hometown paper in Greeley. Uh, before I landed at the Denver Post, which after 21 years is kind of where I got the opportunity to learn not just about the newsroom, but also the advertising side and the circulation side and the printing and how all of that business is done in terms of, uh, of the news organization. And then, you know, and also that's where I worked with the editors of the Colorado Sun who had encouraged me to apply when the publisher role uh, uh, became open here. Um, you know, I've always been an ardent supporter of local news. I don't know for any of your folks out there who are on Twitter, that's pretty much probably 75% of my of my news feed. And then the rest of it is like, you know, uh, retweeting really great stories that I hear and then every once in a while a joke. Um, but it's been exciting to kind of move into this position and really do what I love, you know, which is connecting with readers and 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 meeting business owners and the folks so I can just really get to know what I can do to help these publications just be the best that they can for their communities. Well, now that Colorado Community Media is now is taken hold and is our source. Mm -hmm. Talk about the presence of Colorado Community Media in the region that's now going to be really important to Connor for Evergreen, Bailey, the entire mountain community area. Right. Well, I mean, you know, you know, Mark, I mean, it's we cover everything that no one else is paying attention to. Um, you know, that's one of the things that's that's uh, unique to community newspapers and local news organizations throughout the country. Um, you know, in the past, um, you know, two decades, we've lost hundreds of newspapers in the in the nation. I want to say I think it's like 1300 newspapers. And essentially what that does is it's creating these news deserts. And if, uh, you know, a publication like the Courier or the Current were to go away, um, there would be nobody who's covering this information. You know, our reporters, they're going to all of the city council meetings, they're going to the fire district meetings, they're going to park and rec meetings. And they're paying attention to that sort of thing. You know, the uh, coming uh, MEC collective um, that's being built on 285, that's something that we've been paying attention to because we know how important that, you know, that uh, structure will be for that region. And, you know, will likely um, change the quality of life as, you know, of, from what happens when that comes in because then it's gonna bring more people and, you know, we'll talk about that later. But, um, you know, there's that bike ranch that they're building on Shadow Mountain. And they're, you know, the other thing that, of course, you know, there's all these kind of like the, the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of what news is. But there's also just some really cool stories about the people who live there. You know, there's artists and extreme skiers and we're their local source for information. And I don't think, you know, every once in a while you'll see some of those stories get picked up by you know, some of the other news organizations in this area. But for the most part, you know, there's no other publication that's doing what we're doing. We've got a future vision now, the introduction and, mm -hmm. and now the leadership of Colorado Community Media. What's your future vision of the organization and its publications for serving our community? You know, um, what's key in everything that's happening is that, you know, we feel like we're going to be here for the foreseeable future and doing our best to keep everyone connected to the community. You know, in a lot of ways, um, you know, I'm reaching out to the folks at like the My Mountain, you know, My Mountain Town, uh, you know, information. I'm, I'm talking with various business owners and I'm really trying to make sure that uh, that 
they know that we're here for them and that we're here to kind of listen to what's going on. You know, I think um, a person from the uh, from EPRD, you know, called the courier like the lifeblood of the community. And, you know, we certainly believe that. Um, and so that's our future vision is to make sure that we're staying relevant, that we're staying necessary for people. And the way that we do that is by bringing attention to like, you know, the policies and programs that are supporting and hindering economic growth that people are seeing about the educational systems that help shape our workforce and just chronicling that, you know, economic success and challenge. And so we think that's something that's really important to, you know, uh, what our future vision is, you know, um, in a lot of ways, that means that I think that we're going to need to improve and uh, kind of build on uh, digital opportunities, just because I think that even though, you know, digital sometimes is something that is thought of less because of the connection issues and broadband issues and that sort of thing, we do think that that's going to continue to improve and we want to make sure that we're there for them and that people know who we are and that they're you know, able to reach us and connect with us on that way. You know, it's our it's our goal to strengthen and preserve the newspapers for the future. So, you know, and I think that, you know, we do that by telling really great stories and really necessary stories. You know, Linda, we're kindred spirits in that regard. The broadband connection, uh, that's what the radio station uses to reach its audience. The frustration with people not being able to get FM signal off the corridor, I hear oh, yeah. constantly and whether or not we're going to be broadcasting at them. I think we joined together to promote a stronger internet signal all up and down the mountain community corridors. And so we're going to partner with that. And that's kind of exciting. That's really great. I'm, that's really great. I'm glad to hear that because I think that is something where, you know, it's it's always that case of we want to make sure that, you know, information is getting to people in whatever way they want. And there's a lot of people who want that sort of connection and that sort of, and so I think that's wonderful. Well, we've got a handful of fire chiefs that are right behind us, Linda. <laughs> They're <laughs> also looking forward to having that, that ability to communicate more directly, especially when it comes to emergent situations that everybody needs to have virtual access to. Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Just prior to the podcast, we had talked about the uh, aspect of what you really are key in covering, and that is the business developmental activity. Talk about the manner in which you cover business development. Um, you had mentioned the bike park and other kinds of things. And the fact that your coverage of these items is so key to the service of our community. Tell us what this means and, and what you see for the future and it being important to our mountain communities. Right. Well, you know, I mean, uh, development is probably the issue that our team hears about the most, you know, whether it's um, they're worried about whether or not how, how it will affect the quality of life, whether it's, you know, uh, more folks, the traffic, you know, ends up going up if there's more people who are living up there and they want to make sure that, you know, the service that the area is able to withhold, you know, just to be able to handle that that increase in traffic. And of course, you know, uh, a big part of that is wild, wildfire mitigation. You know, that's just one example where uh, if we have more homes built, if we have more areas, you know, uh, where the fire marshals in particular are going to have to find ways to reach that community. If there is a, if there is, God forbid, a fire in that area, they want to make sure that people are safe and that people get out. And so every development is scrutinized by the public. And so, you know, our reporters spend hours listening to planning commission meetings. Um, you know, they hear the concerns that are not just about fires, but about water and about, you know, just unfettered population growth, you know, there's apparently a, a proposal where someone's wanting to put like 188 homes behind the Conifer Safeway. I think it's called Conifer Center. You know, that's in litigation right now, but people are paying attention to what's going on there. And so we want to make sure that we're paying attention to it um, because, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, our, our staffers live in the community. And so they want to make sure, you know, they're able to uh, cover things in a way to, so that people know what's going on. That's key. And we appreciate that. One of your last statements there, that, that your staffers live in our community. There's nothing more than we can appreciate better than having folks who know about us reporting about us. So we thank you very much for that. And now that you're our new publisher, 
Let's talk about something fun that you've discovered about Conifer, the 285 corridor, the Evergreen area. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, I, I mentioned this. Um, uh, I'll probably talk about it a little bit more later, but I'm uh, I'm a flatlander. <laughs> I grew up in northeastern Colorado, so, you know, I'm uh, it. And so it's been really great for me to kind of head west, head southwest from where I am and just uh, really come to get to see like the amazing parks that are along the 285 corridor you know um uh deb uh deb hurley brooks one of our reporters she was talking about the um mount lugo luge which i'm uh which i think is part of the conifer Winterfest. she was saying oh you have to come to that she's like it's just you know it's so much fun but you know i've been to staunton state park and i swear i think the air is just fresher and cleaner up there you know, there's just some amazing parks. And I, I've heard so much about like just the whole, you know, all the events that are happening at them. And I'm really excited to kind of get to learn more about it. You know, I'm uh, if I can figure it out in my schedule, I'm looking to, you know, come to the Conifer Christmas Parade just because I think that sounds like a really fun event. Yeah, we, we would love to have you up here for that. It's, we missed it last year. And <laughs> kind of a sad fact of that's what yeah that's what um deb was saying you know and and deb actually she described it as just the epitome of a small town parade and you know just from where i come from you know that was i'm i'm so excited to kind of experience that um i live in obviously i live in denver proper now and so i don't get to quite see as much of that anymore so let's talk about some of the the nonprofits and the non-business community up here what have you discovered that's important to these nonprofits? churches, uh, the non-business community of our uh, mountain areas? You know, I've been so impressed by how vibrant they are. You know, that's one of the things that it's, you know, coming from a rural area myself, and I, I love to see a community that just kind of comes together in this way. You know, Olivia Love had covered the Split and Stake event in, uh, I think that was in <laughs> September, and I just yes. love that. I mean, you know, that there's the community just kind of puts out a call and people are just jumping to help, you know, the Mountain Resource Center and the 285 Corridor Angels. I think that those kind it's a very giving community. And so it's great to kind of be that, uh, you know, to help be that conduit, to help people know, you know, what these nonprofits and, and um, churches are doing to help the mountain communities you know it's something that you know kind of strikes close to my heart is that there are so many times where people feel like i don't even know where to go to get help and so it's so nice to be that channel that can help you know help people figure out where they need to go and what they need to do and so to me that's just always you know neighbor helping neighbor or you know half the town showing up for fundraisers or putting things in you know i think that's just amazing and it's the way it's always been i you know i've been told in terms of just you know how those mountain communities just come together and i just love that you know once again linda we are kindred spirits you on the print side Yours truly here on the audio side, uh, <laughs> because we're required in essence to step up. We don't have a local government that serves the area up here, so it's again you and the print media. Yours truly here on the audio, stepping forward to help these nonprofits because they they fill in the niche that you would normally have a, a, a municipal or town government stepping right. up to, to help with. <clears throat> That's so, so true. So true. Well, let's, let's shift gears to you as Linda. What would you like our mountain communities to know about you that maybe folks don't know? <laughs> well, I've been talking about it already a lot on here, but, you know, I'm from a small town. And so I understand what that means. You know, when I was in high school, I was the, uh, I was the photographer for the uh, Platte Valley uh, high school wrestling team. <laughs> so, and my pictures would show up in the Kersey voice, you know, and so I, I understand what it's like when, you know, this is the world of this community and that these are the things that the way that people treat each other and that, you know, what's important in the bigger, broader world out there, you know, what you see in the, you know, in the larger metro papers or, you know, even the papers on the East or West Coast it's not necessarily as important and and because what matters is what's happening for me today and so i'm reminded of a of a really amazing story that deb did in uh, september about the uh, bleachers at conifer high school and just the fact that 
you know, the booster club raised the money and they installed them themselves and they were so proud of it. And they had every right to be because those are the kinds of things that that action and everything that everybody who came together in order to make that happen, you know, was just, you know, an amazing, it was, it was a really great thing for that community and helps keep the community strong. And so those are the kinds of things that, you know, affect me just as, you know, a, a small town person myself is that I understand what that means and why that matters so much in the community. So, um, and you know, it's all ready for the Mountain Bowl. So as we close our discussion, Linda, what encouragement do you have for the future of Evergreen, Conifer, Bailey, and our US-285 corridor? You know, I just think that that area is such a great place to live. Um, You know, as I said, I uh, hadn't had much of a chance to get that way until I took this job as publisher. And um, and I've just, I've been, you know, just falling in love with it every time I go up there. I just see these beautiful views and I want people to kind of like, recognize what a great place it is to live and that they have an opportunity, you know, to get to know their neighbors. And, you know, uh, community newspapers are something that, as I've said, has a long history and and a very certain place in my heart. And so I want to make sure that people are reading their courier and that they're reading their current and that they're supporting us in whatever way they can. You know, we're doing a fundraiser right now, uh, which is called Reader's Care. And essentially, it's something where we really, you know, want our readers to, you know, help us and help, uh, you know, our community, our community newspaper stay strong. So you can find information about it at coloradocommunitymedia.com slash readers care. Uh, if you have something to give, we'd love to have, you know, we'd, we'd love to receive it. And we'd be so proud and honored to uh, continue to work with you. Linda, thank you very much for your time today. And on behalf of our Conifer Radio listeners, actually the entire mountain communities of Conifer, Bailey, Evergreen Pine, uh, the entire U.S. 25 quarter, we want to recognize you, Ms. Linda Shapley, for stepping up to lead our local newspapers. And as our publisher, we want to recognize you for your continuing leadership for truly our three mountain media publications, including the Canyon Courier, the Clear Creek Current, and the 285 Hustler. And as we wish you all the best with your continuing service to our mountain communities, Linda, would you like to join us again in the near future for another edition of Conifer Podcast? Oh, absolutely. This has been really a lot of fun. Thank you.